when I came here to seek asylum, I found myself in a situation called direct provision. Direct provision is a system which uh, asylum seekers are pressed when they have arrived in this country. Uh, there is no family life, you're not allowed to cook, you're not allowed to go to school, you only get 19, 10 euro a, a week. And uh, basically you are just living in a situation whereby you just sleep, wake up and eat. Uh, after staying in this uh, uh, system for a very long time, then it became really hard that I was clinically diagnosed with depression and through that um, I needed to find ways of coping. I used to go out to Irish Refugee Council and help out and things like that and I used also to bring like ideas to uh, at that time the CEO then was Sue Conlan which is like to say to her like you know we can do this and we can do that and she was up for it so um, she asked me like she just asked me Ellie do you want to take a volunteer post like with us and I started visiting colleges universities schools educating about direct provision public speaking and while we do that, I'll bring in like women from direct provision and do like a bit of cooking, home cooking. We go like in a community center, we cook food and we invite four or five people, ten people and people started loving the food. People were like, why can't you do something a bit more than this? And from there, in 2016, in September, then we set up a three-month pop-up cafe. We employed refugees and we led asylum seekers to volunteer and also to get a bit of training. Uh, after that, I myself, I went to Balimalu, where I spent almost five months with Darina Allen. I was invited by Darina Allen. And when I was going there, the idea was I was going for internship for like three months. Then one morning, Darina, she just woke up and said, you know what, I'm not giving you internship at all. I'm going to give you training, the full training. But then the training which I got from Balimalu and all the knowledge and the energy now, it just busted into me that I think that's what has kept the project going. Food can connect people in very different way. That you and I, we can speak different language, not even understand each other at all, but food, can create, can, can, can break those boundaries, can break those barriers. So that's what our table has done. Food has played a big role. And people, instead of like coming out, listen to my story and start crying, people they've come out and be excited and want to know more about our direct provision and wants to end it. Like, no, this is ridiculous. We have to really end the system. Like, look, this food is being made by women from direct provision. This is made by people who are being locked. Why are we keeping them in this system? So I'm still in direct provision. I'm not really sure when the pass is going to happen, but I hope it's going to happen so soon. But that is not like stopping me to deprive myself of who really I am because I think the greatest thing is I have me, I have myself. That's what has not been taken away by direct provision. So where our table is now is I am still like dreaming to open up a cafe, even if it was like last week. We are in the process now of registering into the way of coming up a charity. So yeah, so things are going great. The system can change in many ways, like my platform it's another solution of changing the situation. I've heard that the minister, Charlie Flanagan, has said that people have not yet come to him to tell him how he can change the system. But these are the solutions. Not a reform, but these are the solutions. If we can work like the way our table is working and there are other issues, other people, they can also tackle another corner. I'm telling you, two, three years from now, we won't be talking of direct provision. We'll be talking of a system which was abolished and which asylum seekers took the platform themselves to bring these changes. So 